Ich kam als äh, diplomatischer Korrespondent des Nachrichtenmagazins Der Spiegel in Begleitung des Bundesaußenministers Genscher äh, zu der Open Skies Konferenz äh, nach Ottawa. Und wir wussten, dass äh, der Konferenzort Weltgeschichte schreiben würde wahrscheinlich, weil das Format für die Verhandlungen zur deutschen Einheit dort beschlossen werden sollte. I was the head of the official Canadian delegation. Uh, my position in the Department of Foreign Affairs was Director General of the International Security and Arms Control Bureau. And I had been involved in the formulation of the Open Skies Initiative since Prime Minister Mulroney put it to George Bush in May of 1989. Herr Nobel hat ja eine wichtige Rolle gespielt, sozusagen, äh als Verhandlungsführer der kanadischen Seite. Und ich nehme auch an, dass er geahnt hat, was da in den Kulissen und Hinterzimmern alles nebenbei lief. At George Bush's first summit in May of 1989, one of the big issues was short-range nuclear weapons, the type that were stationed in Germany and which could only explode in Germany. And naturally the Germans wanted that category weapon eliminated. But during the debate, Brian Mulroney looked across the NATO table and said to George Bush, Mr. President, I want to remind you of something said by a former Supreme Court Justice Learned Hand. He said that leadership to be effective has to take into account the views of others. And I think that if you look at George Bush's and Jim Baker's record in terms of German reunification, in terms of the SNF debate, in terms of whole East-West relations, They listened, and that's important, that you have people who are prepared to take into account the views of others. Otherwise, it would have been a very different situation. On the second day at lunch, Joe Clark and I were in the line for buffet, and we sat down beside the British Foreign Secretary, Douglas Hurd, and he told Clark about the agreement between the four occupying powers and the two German states to launch the two plus four exercise. Uh, Joe Clark's immediate reaction was that we had to have a NATO foreign minister's meeting since German reunification had been a part of NATO's creed since 1955 when West Germany became a part of NATO. So for 35 years, every NATO communique at, at the summit or foreign minister's level always talked about German reunification. So to, to launch a process which included Uh, three or four NATO, uh, four NATO countries without the rest of them was something that had to be dealt with and handled rather delicately. Da spielten jetzt die Kanadier eine hilfreiche Rolle. Es gab dann, äh, als äh, die NATO-Außenminister informiert wurden über die gefundene Lösung, gab es eine erhebliche Unruhe. Und äh, in diesem Dokument steht zum ersten Mal drin, dass die, dass die sechs verhandeln sollten, Zitat, die Herstellung der deutschen Einheit. Und, jetzt kommt es, und die Sicherheit der Nachbarstaaten. Und da fühlten sich die Holländer und die Italiener besonders aufgerufen und sagten, wenn es um die Sicherheit der Nachbarstaaten geht, wollen wir beteiligt sein. Dieses wollten aber die sechs auf jeden Fall verhindern und es kam zu erregten Debatten und äh, so dass Genscher den holländischen Außenminister Hans Vandenbroek anblaffte und sagte Hans you are not part of the game and clearly that was the cause of great consternation Joe Clark immediately decided to call a, a pause time out and he decided he wanted a caucus with Jim Baker Baker agreed with that And he said, look, I'm going to promise all of them that I will keep them fully involved and fully informed, fully informed, not involved, fully informed about the progress of the two plus four exercise. And he did that. And that was the end of what could have been a very difficult situation inside NATO. At the end of February 1990, Brian Mulroney and George Bush had a phone conversation before Bush was to receive Chancellor Cole at Camp David. Bush said, well, people have suggested to me that the Russians be allowed to keep troops in eastern Germany, notwithstanding unification. 
Mulroney said, no, that's totally unacceptable. Uh, Germany has to be a full NATO country with no German troops, uh, no uh, Russian troops involved. And the new German state has to be part of the Western Alliance <coughs> and all uh, organizations. Die deutsche Seite wusste sich äh, von, von den Kanadiern in jeder Hinsicht unterstützt. Das ist auch mehrfach gewürdigt äh, worden später, auch übrigens von Bundeskanzler Helmut Kohl. Und es gab ja auch äh, äh, kanadische Soldaten auf, deutschen, auf westdeutschen Boden. Ähm, war es wichtig, einen so engen, befreundeten Verbündeten auf seiner Seite zu wissen. Ne? In 1993... Chancellor Kohl told a committee of the Bundestag that when Germans think of the people involved in helping unification, we think of three leaders. He said George Bush, he said Brian Mulroney, and Mikhail Gorbachev. I don't think too many Canadians and I don't think too many Germans will think that Brian Mulroney was in the same category as George Bush or Mikhail Gorbachev in that respect. But who am I to question the words? Chancellor Cole.